And this is my wife and colleague in ministry, Mrs. Donnett Norman. Uh, welcome to Word Vibes, Perspectives. Uh, of course, we're discussing topical issues from the eternal record, otherwise called the Bible, because we know that that was written before time began, actually by God himself. And then God downloaded it, firstly to Moses, some of it to Moses, Job, and other persons as we hear throughout the, the, the Bible. So the eternal record is something that we use to look at the different issues that we're facing. Um, one of the things we want to look at today is the fact that the humble truly believes God, or the truly humble person believes God. That's what we're looking at today. So let's kickstart that discussion on Donnet. <laughs> Hi. Mm. As was mentioned, we're looking at the eternal record, and this will be a two-part series. The humble believes God. Mm. And as we were preparing this particular um, study, we, we, we got very excited in our spirits because mm. we, we began to see that if we would truly believe God, because the truth is all of us have been given a, 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 a slot of time out of God's heart to live out his plan for us on planet earth mm. and um, the key to finding what your purpose is in life is to believe God mm. and we are coming to see that it is really the, truly the humble who believes God so this ingredient of humility we have had to pause and look at this and I've had to be looking at my life and I've come to see that the times when I had breakthroughs, the times when I, 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 I found what I was born to do, mm. and I, 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 in, in the process of working through, I saw God at work. It came because of, of how I, I chose to believe God. So true. Right. So, so true. Right. I mean, I'm looking at some answers to prayers recently. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I was able to see God respond, because an answer to prayer is simply God responding to a heart that believes Him. Right. And when God speaks to us, or He communicates, I, I, I sometimes don't like to use just the word speak, because communication mm -hmm. is a lot more than just right. speaking. It's a lot more than just speaking words. Mm -hmm. God speaks to us through so many things. But, but if, we, if we truly hear what God says without reservation, if we truly embrace it, mm -hmm. what God is communicating, then we are able to pray the will of God in the earth. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some great miracles recently in my life and ministry because I believe God. Mm -hmm. And so I just see it as, you know, wow, you know how dare us not believe God. And so today we're going to be look at be looking at the fact that the humble believes God part one. Mm. Um, what are the benefits of believing God? Um, how do we come to a place of believing God? Mm. And how important it is for us to keep believing God in the time He has given all of us. Now, interestingly, the journey that could have taken the children of Israel about two weeks from Egypt to the promised land of Canaan took them 40 years. Mm. So too is the fact that of the over 2 million who left Egypt, only two persons, Joshua and Caleb, were able to enter the promised land. Mm. Why? We need to stop and we need to look two at Two persons that. over 20 years old. Wow. Two only persons? Only two persons. Two persons that were under 20 years old. Right. Uh, okay. Right. Two persons that are under. Actually, people. actually, <laughs> it's two persons over twenty years old. Yeah, two persons. Yeah, only two persons that, when they left Egypt, right. Um, there were some that were over twenty years old, and of those persons, only Joshua and Caleb. Okay. Entered the promised land. Amen. Why? God said He took them through the wilderness for forty years. Mm. to humble them, to prove them, and know what was in their heart. And we're going to be looking at that mm. scripture just now. In spite of the many signs, wonders, miracles, and many good things that God did for them, mm. many ch still chose not to believe, them, believe Him. Mm. And therefore, they did not humble themselves. Ah. 
Mm. And he could not allow them to enter. And so his warning to us is to ensure that we do not fo follow their example of unbelief. Now let's look at that scripture. Example of unbelief. Right. Wow. All right. Um, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. This is Moses speaking to the entire nation of Israel. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years okay. in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. All right, look at verse 3 also. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy father know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, Amen. or bread only, yes. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. Out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So, yes. So we see that after seeing so many miracles, I mean, they, mm. the Red Sea, they... The scripture said that they, they were not hungry, their, their clothes were not worn out. Mm. Um, they saw the wonderful works of God. Even what, in their natural provisions. In their natural provision. And, 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 and in and, their health. Right. And, yeah. and they were not sick. None was mm. feeble among, among them. them. Yes. Can you imagine a nation that is getting up and seeing just the miracle of the Red Sea. Mm. And just looking back and seeing Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea behind them. Mm. And um, I can just imagine the jubilation. No wonder Miriam grabbed that timbrel and they had a real praise and worship out there. Mm. But shortly after, they began to complain. And this, the Lord said, He was the one who took them through the wilderness to humble them mm -hmm. and to prove for them to know what was in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this apply to us? We, the children of God, I'm speaking of, to Christians now, mm. the world is our wilderness. And I heard this lesson so beautifully taught by um, Apostle Dr. Mary Banks recently about the wilderness that the sons of God are mm. in as a type of the, the wilderness that the children of Israel went through. And God wants us to humble ourselves and believe and obey Him mm. and fulfill our purpose. And because guess what? If we don't then we are going to fall just like they fell. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to a place where he wants us to look. Let's just zoom in at this scripture. Another scripture mm -hmm. that, that, that backs up this one. Revelation 21 verse 8. Okay, Revelation 21 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But the fearful and unbelieving right. and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the fearful and the unbelieving. Right. When I saw this, I said, wow. Whoa. Um, so, and, and so many of us are in the church and we look down at people who are, who are mongers and um, murderers and mm. abominable people and sorcerers and idolaters. Sorcerers, jeez. My Lord, and liars. The unbelieving is going to be in the same <laughs> judgment as this the sorcerers Lord. Now what classifies someone what qualifies someone to be classified as an unbeliever? unbeliever? Let's look at that. Right. So so God, like you said, God did so much to convince these persons of his love for them, number one, of his faithfulness number two. And afterward they began to doubt God's intent for them. He decided, he decided to doubt his love. Oh, you brought us out here, Moses, in the wilderness to kill us off. We were better in Egypt. He started complaining and murmuring. And that grieved the Lord. Okay. You see, he said, he said I, have, I brought you this route to humble you. Okay. Um, this is not a, an oppressive kind of humbling. It's not an evil kind of humbling. It's not like how somebody might, might be stronger than somebody else and, and and force them into a sexual relation, sexual activity or, or rape them or something like that. That's not the idea here. The idea here from, from because God is totally righteous and holy is that 
he was showing them the re where they really were. That's what that means. He, he led them that way to humble them, to show them what the, their real state was. Right. To show them their, the, the, their real need for him. Because mankind had forgotten how much they needed God. Right. Adam knew that he needed God when God made him. Every day he knew that he needed to have time with God, alone with God, one-on-one right. -on -one with God, to, to, to be re recouped and recharged, to be, mm -hmm. to be re energized, yeah. to, to, to be able to truly live. He needed to hear from God, to fellowship with God. But, but this generation of people, they had forgotten that. And so God had to lead them that way for them to come back to the reality of the fact that man does not live you cannot live by bread alone. That, that is something that God had to reconvince convince the whole human race about again. Right. And he did it on a, on a big scale this time, not just with one individual, but with a whole nation. Right. He proved to them. So this word, man shall not live by bread alone, is not speaking even to an individual. God is speaking to a whole nation. A whole nation can live. A whole nation can come alive unto God and fulfill its purpose in the earth if they hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Man, that is encouraging. And, um, and this is what's so exciting because for you to have, um, for, for God to classify you as an unbeliever, mm -hmm. um, it's because as, as we are saying, you are not humble. And he knows when he would have sufficiently persuaded you. Oh, yes. And, and yes, guess what? Yes. No, you know what? Why he this is so important? Yes. And, and we want you. This is coming from one of our worldwide Bread for the Nations um, readings on our Facebook page. You can go to worldwide Bread for the Nations and you can zoom in on the Humble Believes God Part 1. But I just want to read something here from this same transcript. And it's written to, it's written, it's taken from the Power of Belief. A book written by Dr. Mary Banks, he says, It takes humility to believe and obey God. And he knows when he has sufficiently influenced us to believe him. That's right. In other words, God knows when we believe him. And when we believe him and choose to walk contrary to what he has persuaded us, mm. that's when he classifies us as an unbeliever. And that oh, is yes. when... He can cast us into the lake of fire with those with the sorcerers, sorcerers and etc. So we are now, undoing what God has already done in us. Right. So um, just as there's a oh scripture boy. that says that if we the transgressor the way of the transgressor is hard, yes. Mm -hmm. But if we build again the things that God has destroyed in mm -hmm. our lives, we, we may become we become a transgressor. A transgressor. Right. But there's just one thing I want to zoom in again. Mm -hmm. When God provides proof of his presence and power it is a sin to reject what he says or, or does. does to do so is termed unbelief, unbelief. so this is not just disbelief which you know god can say something and you know you know you're not too sure if you, you probably don't know god you never was introduced to him this is a totally different thing unbelief is 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 as it were throwing what God had done for you back in his face. And let me give an example. I, again, I'm taking it from the transcript. One example is that you may be required to humble yourself to someone who wronged you. I was. Mm -hmm. There was a time when I was thin-skinned and easily offended. I would run as fast as I could from anyone and any situation mm -hmm. that offended me, that mm -hmm. was offensive. Mm -hmm. One day, I was offended by the actions of a couple who lived next door. Mm. and withdrew my love for a while mm. trust me they had wronged me yeah. and trust me i withdrew my love i was in malice i didn't speak to them You're because they were wrong. <laughs> and um guess what he was a he's a witness of this the lord showed me fear and a lack of love in my heart and guess what on a particular evening i nailed i went to kneel down to pray and i was just about to pray for them and lord you see what what, what they're doing to me and the lord said Get up from off your knee, you're a hypocrite. Get up and go humble yourself to your neighbor next door. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The Lord showed me fear and a lack of love in my heart. And this time I got up and I went next door and I humbled myself. Mm -hmm. I asked them to forgive me for my lack of love and reach out to them. 
And guess what? This couple too, a part of the reason I was offended with them, to the matter of fact, there were two couples that I was offended with. Mm -hmm. One of them, because they were, one was not married and they were just carrying on with loud parties and music and whatever. And trust me, the Lord worked in this particular situation after I humbled myself mm -hmm. and had us reach out to that young lady until one day she surrendered her life to God. And you know what she said? We were watching your life. Mm -hmm. The other couple, mm -hmm. the problem with that, even when I, when I kneel down to mm -hmm. ask the Lord to forgive me and to, to you know, you're praying those prayers about you. God said, go and humble yourself. And I went door and next time I said, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I have not spoken to you. I have married you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And just as I finished, I went back next door and I began to really pray for them mm -hmm. from my pure heart. Wow. And about an hour later, mm -hmm. that boyfriend came in through the gate and I heard when the gate was pulled and I saw a wrecker. Mm -hmm. His car was on a wrecker. Mm -hmm. You couldn't believe that someone would have come out of an accident like that alive. Mm -hmm. And he was oh, trembling yeah. like a leaf. And I ran to him and hugged him up. And I was there saying, I'm so glad you didn't die from this. And, and, mm -hmm. and trust me, I was, I was reaching out to him with a pure, sincere heart. Guess mm -hmm. what? Because God had convicted me. God had convinced me that, guess what? He had put me in these two couples' lives. He had mm -hmm. put us mm -hmm. to be a witness to them. So, so when we walked contrary and we walked love, in offense, yeah, yeah. instead of loving, we were walking in, in iniquity <laughs> and what? Unbelief. That's right, that's right. So we want you to stay tuned because when we return from this break, we are going to look further at this fact that only the humble truly believe God. Do you believe God? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Word Vibes and we continue the discussion on the humble believes God and we are looking at the fact that God expects us to believe his word, yes. to believe what he communicates to us, to believe what he's doing and not to resist him in any way, form or fashion because we cannot live except we believe him or obey him. So belief and obedience is interchangeable from God's perspective. When we truly believe Him, there will be no resistance, no, no opposition to anything that He says. And so, you know, I was so excited as, the, as we were sharing, the Lord was very much with us and still is. And I know He's meeting you today. I was so excited when the Lord quickened our understanding to know that this Word is even a whole nation can come alive unto God's purpose for their, for their for the nation if they hear the word of the Lord, the true word of God. And so God has been faithful to dispense his word in the earth through his holy apostles and prophets primarily. And of course the other parts of the fivefold ministry, the teacher, the pastor and the evangelist. But primarily through the His holy apostles and prophets. And so the perspective that we come from is the prophetic and the apostolic perspective. Amen. And so God is so faithful because Jesus Himself had to humble Himself to the Word of God. Amen. And when we humble ourselves to the Word of God, the result is that God confirms right. His Word. And, and so I just go back to a statement that we, we made in the, just before the break. When God provides proof of his presence and power, it is a sin to reject what he says or does, and to do so is termed unbelief. But, I mean, in this intellectual age, I mean, there are persons who feel like it's okay to think, you know, to look for another way other than all God says. You know, we know that this is what God is saying, but, you know, we are bright people, we have been enlightened, we say. So, um, you know, we can... Come up, we can come up with some other way. Is that is that what some of us are doing? And and we think that that is not rejection. 
you know, that can be what is happening with it, some persons. It is rejection, and we bring it back to the scripture that says, the fearful and the unbelieving, Revelation 21 verse 8, mm -hmm. and the abominable and the murderer and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire mm -hmm. and brimstone, which is the second death. Unbelieving. And the, the unbelieving. And, and I just want to zoom in here to say that God is very, God, God, God is a persuader. Mm. He knows how to, he knows how to bring you to a place of belief. Mm. And he knows when your heart has come yeah, to know knows. for sure that you know that it's him. Yes, yes. So when he has persuaded you, like some of you are watching now, and God took you to a place where you know that he is real. Mm. And guess what? You have allowed the loss of the flesh, the loss of the, the pride of life, and the loss of the eyes to have caused you to go in unbelief. Mm. And God is using the same word that it took to get you to believe him to pull out that spirit of unbelief out of you today. Mm. And let's zoom in at another scripture, Hebrews 4 verse 11. Mm. This scripture says, Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Which example of unbelief is he talking about? Um, well, we have the children of Israel right. is what he was talking about. That whole nation, we mentioned that only two of the persons who left out of Egypt who was over 20 years old. Only two entered the promised land, actually fulfilled the promise of God entered into the rest that God had for them, into Canaan, which was a natural rest. Um, only two persons did, Caleb and Joshua. But the, the, the thing I want to, to, to also mention here is the whole thing of, of us, the fact that the humble are the ones who truly believe the Word of God. And, and if we don't believe the Word of God, we, have, we are entering into unbelief. We, have, we are undoing that persuasion and God can persuade you there are some of you listening to me right now and I know by the spirit that you, God has spoken specifically to you about specifics I'm not just talking about believing the Bible I'm talking about the, the voice of God coming to you directly maybe through counsel godly counsel and wisdom that God has spoken to you and you know it is God it may be through your own child that God has spoken to you about the specific plan that he has for your life and then you are now starting to question, to, to, to that. question that and to begin to try and find another way around it. You, 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 you're beginning to allow the enemy to cause you to begin to the devil, to cause you to, to begin to question and to begin to look for another way. Take a break but, here. And yes. Sometimes it's not even the devil. Mm -hmm. The scripture says that um, we can walk in the council. We know it's the work of the devil in a way, but directly, mm. um, as Christians, two things. We can, be, we can choose to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm. And ungodly people are persons who are not seeing things God's way. For example, mm. you may be watching, and you know that it's not the will of God for you to marry someone who is not saved. That's but right. your friends tell you, yes, you can marry him because guess what? He's a, he's a good man or he's a good woman and he'll soon get saved. Mm -hmm. Another way in which we walk, we take on unbelief is the scripture says we oppose ourselves. Mm -hmm. In other words, you make decisions con 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 contrary to your nature. To your nature mm -hmm. And you know, because guess what? Don't we all know when, we, when we're going contrary to our nature? That's right. Don't we all That's know right. when we're walking in unbelief? Mm -hmm. You know what? You don't feel that freedom of worship. There's no peace. Yeah, there's no peace. Mm -hmm. When you're walking in unbelief, the scripture says, um, we will be led forward with peace. Mm -hmm. You don't feel peace when you're walking in unbelief. What? And there's a reason that God is coming at this because mm -hmm. he's seen that so many of us are disqualifying ourselves from the inheritance we have among the sanctified mm -hmm. because he has come to us and even this broadcast I can tell you God specifically spoke this chap this chapter today this transcript because he wants to speak to you about the unbelief right. that has developed in your heart after he has persuaded you of his specific will right. and, 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 and I dare say that 
God, God could have been speaking to you specifically to say, this is a person you need to marry, and you're telling yourself you're not going to be happy with that person. Oh, God could have been speaking to you and said, guess what, your time, the time that I have for you is short. I don't want you to get married. That might sound very hard. Right now, right. I want you to focus on me in this season and trust me wholeheartedly. He, by the way, he said that if we acknowledge him in all our ways, that's the path of unbelief. You're talking about the path of unbelief? The path, the path of belief? If you are trusting the Lord with all your heart, mm -hmm. lean not mm -hmm. to your mm -hmm. own understanding mm -hmm. in all your ways. Acknowledge it. Where do I go to school? Where do I live? Who do I marry? Which church do I become a part of? Acknowledge me and I will direct your path. So if you're watching today, I want to challenge you to repent if you know you are walking in unbelief. Ask God to forgive you and go back to that state of peace, of humility, of humility with yes. Him. Because it's truly the humble who believes God. Mm -hmm. And if you are not believing God, it shows that you pride. are not humble. Right. It's pride. And what did He say? The proud, He will abase. Amen. We want to ask you to continue watching this series. This has been another presentation of word vibes perspectives for further information we invite you to visit our facebook pages andrew and donnie norman the word is light word vibes or to read the today's transcript word vibes bread for the nations thank you so much for watching and remember it is the humble that believes god amen amen Thank mm -hmm. you.